Ashley, um, on behalf of the board of Chesterfield FC, what is the reaction to last night's result and its possible ramifications? Um, from our point of view, very disappointing, and I think the uh, the reality that is looming is uh, is obviously relegation. Um, what's the owner's reaction to it, Dave Allen? Um, he's probably been talking about relegation for the last month, six weeks now. Uh, again, he's very disappointed about it, and um, obviously now looking forward to what we do to uh, to correct this. Having been so close to Championship football, how has it got to this point? I think, uh, for me, I think it all went wrong when Paul Cook went. I think we lost, what we had some magic in there, we had some sparkle and um, we had a great manager. And I think from that point we never recovered from that. And, uh, you know, whatever we did at the time, unfortunately we were not going to keep Paul Cook. Um, I know it's harsh, but he went to a bigger club at the end of the day, and uh, it was very, very difficult to to do anything about that. I think history as well with the football club is is the same that we lose good managers to bigger clubs. Uh, on the day Jack Lester was appointed, you said that the heart had been ripped out of Chesterfield FC, and that it was so wrong, and it was time to amend that. Who or what has ripped the heart out of Chesterfield FC? Well, I think unfortunately we, it, it, it's still we're still in that situation now. Um, I think an awful lot of politics off the field have contributed to it, and obviously uh, some of the managers that have come in have uh, have not performed. Uh, we interviewed we with the greatest of uh, belief. We thought that the managers coming in would have done the job. They haven't done the job. So we've got a combination of failure on the pitch. Um, and I have to hold my hand up as well and say failure off the pitch in the boardroom as well in some areas and um, a combination of, of, of that losing touch with the with the fan base as well um, I still think that is an issue uh, of which um, we, we need to address but I think the you know the, the Sheffield thing as well is not good and it's not been accepted in Chesterfield and I don't think it ever will be Recently we've heard chants from supporters wanting you out of the club and I believe you were confronted both at Carlisle and at the Pro Act on Saturday. Why are you still at the football club? Um, a mixture really. I think um, I think a dedication and a loyalty to Dave, Dave Allen um, first and foremost. Uh, I have spoken to him about this on several occasions. Um, he wants me to remain at the club and um, I think, you know, it's relegation and, and everything else that's happened it's not it's not solely down to one person and I don't feel that um, the blame is is all down to myself um, I'm in a position at this football club which I didn't ask to be in um, it's uh, circumstances that have led to this and you know the same for Mike Warner John crew on the board as well um, but um, I've given assurances to Dave Allen that I will stay um, until the club can be sold so if we move into the questions that were submitted by supporters, uh, if non-league is the outcome at the end of this season, which looks likely at this stage, what would be the aim for next season, survival or promotion? I would say promotion. I really don't want to stay in that league. And to that end, uh, has Dave Allen committed to fund a promotion bid? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to Dave about this and I mean... Um, you know, it's it's certainly it's going to cost a lot of money. We we lo we lose um, we lose a lot of money from the from the football league. We get a parachute payment, um, but um, there is going to be a big shortfall again. Um, but we, we we want to we want to remain in touch. Uh, we're going to have to cut the wages bill down as well. Um, but we do want to get the balance right to uh, to remain competitive, and and to make a challenge obviously straight back for promotion. Two players currently at the club, thinking mostly of those signed by Gary Caldwell and Guy Branson, quite a lot of two-year contracts. Do they have relegation clauses that would reduce their wages? Yeah, there is. Uh, there's one or two that have. Um, I've got some numbers. We've, we've at the moment we've got a squad of 35. Um, we've got five loan players, which will um, which will go at the end of the season. Uh, we've got 12 players that are out of contract. Um, and there's 16 players at the moment that's left uh, with, with a year on their contract left, of which nine have got a 20% reduction on um, relegation. 
and there's one player that's uh, got an option to a free transfer should we get relegated and then that remains one player that's uh, 2020 and, and one at 2021. If relegated, will the club become unsustainable financially? Um, no. The, the the situation is um, we've had a board meeting today, and I've obviously had meetings with Dave Allen. But this this football club from now on is going to be run as a proper business. Um, I think we've been guilty before, um, and Dave Allen has wanted to throw money at it, bring the players in, have a large budget. Um, you know, and this year the, the the wages bill, by the time you've done with all the loan players and everything else, is going to be probably nudging on 2.2 million um, that is a big budget for this league and we would have expected a, a lot better than where we are so you know next year we've got to uh, got to cut the budget by half probably more than slightly more than half but just under a million pounds um, and we've got to we've got to run this football club on a, a really tight ship uh, to uh, make sure that uh, the money that Dave Allen puts into the club will be minimal why has it taken to this point for the decision to be made to run it as a proper business when Dave Allen said when he came in it would be run as a proper business? I think the aspirations were there to always to get the promotion and I think we've been chasing the dream and I think we've been chasing it for too long and it's, it isn't sustainable. Um, I mean, we, we, we are very fortunate that Dave Allen has been putting the money in, but uh, there comes a stage where you have to have that reality check, and that's where we are now. Given the drop in uh, away support for next season at the Pro Act, will the club be opening the North Stand for community deals? We'll be looking at that. We'll certainly be talking to community uh, and, and utilise the stadium. Um, that, that's certainly an option, yes. And will you maintain the East Stand for season ticket holders there? Yeah, we have talked about that. Um, there has been talk about closing that or closing parts of it. Um, I think the the, um, the away fans will go will, will certainly will go into that part of the stadium next year. But um, I don't want to upset anybody with the season tickets in that stand. So the the rest of the stand will remain unchanged for next year. And anybody who's got their season ticket this year that wants to renew, and hopefully people will, um, they'll, they'll be able to choose the seats as normal. Now what's the situation with season ticket prices? Um, will they reduce significantly uh, if it's non-league football? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, we are going to reduce the prices, obviously, and the prices that um, that we have agreed now are irrespective of whether we remain in uh, in League Two or or non-League next year. And um, basically, there's going to be about a 20% reduction in the season ticket prices. So we've got kind of a, a, the, the most expensive at the moment is 420, 420 pounds. That will go down to 360. Um, the cop price of 345 will go down to 272 um, there will also so on a match day uh, the ticket prices will range for an adult from between 16 and 20 pounds 20 pound will be the most that you'll pay on a match day um, in recognition of the loyalty of the uh, existing season ticket holders within the early bird, the uh, existing season tickets will command a further 5% reduction as well on their, on their season tickets. Um, but we're, we're, we're now getting everything together so that they will, the new season tickets will go on sale from 21st of May uh, until, the, uh, until the last Saturday in June. Um, and, I, and you know we've looked at that. I think we should certainly be uh, we would be competitive within within non-league and, and and certainly very competitive within within League Two. We know there's a shortfall and that Dave Allen has had to put in a significant amount of money every month. Are, are your projections showing that that will increase in the National League? No, I mean. Cost of relegation um, at the moment we reckon will be one and a half million pounds cost to the club. So we um, we reduce the wages bill by a million pounds, and then we've got another half a million pounds of uh, of costs uh, to cut out of the club, um, <clears throat> and then anything that that we don't achieve there, then Dave Allen would make the difference. So I have a question from a supporter: uh, Why did you hire Guy Branston? Guy Branston, um, at the time when Gary Cordwell came in here, um, I think 
he realised that he didn't know enough about the, the lower leagues and wanted to bring somebody in who, um, who was f going to be head of recruitment. He, um, Guy Branston asked to be interviewed and also uh, another applicant, Paul Lemon, he, he, he was also interviewed. Both were interviewed by um, Gary Cordwell and Gary Cordwell said that he wanted to appoint Guy Branston and I backed that decision. Um, I believe you had a confrontation with a supporter on Saturday at the Mansfield game. Can you tell us what was said and do you understand the frustrations of supporters? Yeah, of course I understand the frustration. I mean, I, uh, you know, I had the, uh, uh, the fans at, um, at Carlisle in the station. They, they voiced their opinions then. And, um, and, and obviously the fan did on Saturday. He was just saying, blaming me for bringing Gary Cordwell in. Um, I didn't get involved with anything, any any kind of uh, uh, dialogue with the fan, but I understand this. Um, Gary Cordwell came in here. Uh, th th I still don't know why he didn't succeed. He he was uh, he was widely accepted by the fans, um, and he was saying, you know, you brought Gary Cordwell in here. It's all your fault. Um, the reality on Saturday, I had a look at the team sheet, there was only three players on the pitch at the start that were Gary Cordwell's players, Robbie Weir, uh, Andy Keller and Lewis Reid. So, um, but I, I, I take it on the chin. Uh, a supporter says, we appear to be a rudderless ship at board level. What confidence can you give to supporters that people at the top of the club are 100% behind it? Would you agree that being absent from the club paints a negative picture to fans? Yeah, I mean, I, t I took the decision um, following uh, planned protests and on the back of the Carlisle game to, to stay away from the club. Um, since then, I've had nothing but people at the club asking me when I'm coming back, including I've spoken to like, Ian Everett, had a conversation with him. He was kind of, I just don't know why you aren't here. Everybody's got to stick together behind all this. Um, it's fragmentation in the ranks. Uh, and that's why I uh, I came back last week. Um, it, it was good to see people because I, I really haven't been here for for a few weeks. Although I've been talking to people, um, and you know the, there is the there is still the the hundred percent commitment from the board. You know, at the end of the day, Mike, Mike Warner's. I, I think it's fair to say, and he wouldn't mind me saying this, is a reluctant chairman. He doesn't really want to be here. Uh, he doesn't want to be in that position, but he is, and he's giving a hundred percent. John Crew, given the choice, I, th I don't think John would really want to remain in position, but he is, and we're all giving it 100%. Um, have we lost touch with what's happening out there? I think, certainly, I think we have. I think there's, um, I think there's a lot of distrust. I think uh, fans think that uh, Dave Allen and myself are just taking money out of the club. Which is which is totally incorrect, um, yeah, and I place it on record now that Dave Allen is taking no money out of this football club. Um, he hasn't received any interest for probably over two years now. The um, I, I've managed to uh, agree, get him to agree that the mortgage has been suspended, and it's not in, it's not accruing any interest or anything. We just simply to stop paying it. That's that was twenty four thousand pounds a month. Um, He's got nine million invested in this football club, and he takes not one penny out, no interest, no nothing. And every month, when he puts money in, he puts the money in, and there's there's no deals in place that pay, that pay him interest or anything. Uh, this year, he's probably will have put in a million, one point two million, and he's taken absolutely nothing back out. And yes, it, every month it is a, it, it is hard work talking to him about it and justifying where the money's gone, but he puts the money in. So you know, there's nothing going on in the in the boardroom. There's nobody's taking money out. There isn't any money to take out.